Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Parade of Paws. I'm Officer Thomas Anderson from the Casa Grande Police Department and with me today is Animal Control Officer Julie Tiemann with the Animal Care and Adoption Center. We hope you've had a great summer and we're right in the middle of it and we are here today to showcase about eight dogs and maybe seven or more cats for you today and we're going to get right into it. So let's start off with our first dog. Okay, our first dog is named Sky. It's a female German Shepherd. She's about nine months old. Um, she's already spayed. She's ready to go home. And as you can see, she's black and tan. It's a very good little dog. Um, very young though. She will need some training, some basic obedience and that sort of thing. But basically, what she wants most in life is just have somebody do just what Justin is doing with her and give her attention. She's, she's starved for it and really wants it. That seems to be the common characteristic of every animal we showcase. They are wanting some attention and some loving, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's why uh, a lot of dogs tend to be out there and about. That's what they're looking for is somebody who's going to pay attention to that's them. That's right, so, that's yeah. right. And you know, speaking of that, uh, you've had quite a few dogs and cats come in lately, right? Absolutely. Yeah, We've been very full. <laughs> right. We're going to get back to that here in a little bit. But next up is Stowaway. <clears throat> Stowaway is a male Queensland healer mix. Well, I don't know how much of a mix is in there, but he is a very good boy. Um, we've actually had him out and on a little ranch, and he seems to really, really want to work. Uh, so if you're looking for a dog to help you out, this guy likes to work. Um, it's very mellow until it's time to work, and then he does just, just what he needs to do, and he seems to already be aware of what he needs to do when he's out there. Did I say how old he was? Uh, you did not. He's about, well, we believe he's between one and two years old. Um, he's not very old, but he is just a sweetheart of a dog and very calm and gentle. Can you get people for us? Let's go around. There you go, good boy. Good boy. Good boy. That's stowaway. Stowaway, very popular breed. Yes, absolutely, yes. All right, next up, I believe we have Savannah, correct? Yes, and Savannah is a Queensland healer mix. Female, about seven months old. Come here, Savannah. Good girl. Very affectionate. Again, going to need some guidance on the training, but very friendly, very loving, very playful. Good girl. Good girl. And people should know that Queenslands are very active, right, Julie? Very active, and that energy is pretty much non-stop until they lay down to sleep. So uh, if you're looking for this type of breed and you like to run or maybe you like to play Frisbee, uh, they make great Frisbee dogs, they make great herding dogs. They just make really good pets, but they don't like to lay around on the couch. All right, that's Savannah. Next up, I believe, is Calvin. This is another Queensland healer mix. About a year old. He's male. Oh a little less hyper than the others. He's got a little bit of, could have some lab in him, or a few other things. Pretty calm little guy. Very affectionate, happy all of the time. I think he likes to play ball. Not positive on that, but I'm pretty sure he's a he's a ball chaser. Alright, so up next is Lily. Lily is a female chihuahua. And finally one that we can bring up here, huh? Yeah. She's about three years old. Very curious little girl. Pretty quiet, but she can get vocal when she's concerned about something, um, which is a good thing for a dog. It lets you know when people are around, but very friendly, likes to be held. Um, not much of a player, she didn't really get playing with toys or anything, would rather just be a couch potato. And those of you that are fans of our show, you know that our, our pets that we showcase, they get a little stage fight once in a while, and especially when we pick them up and bring them up here to this table. So the, the pets that you see on the ground, usually the larger dogs, they seem a little bit more active usually, and these smaller dogs, they seem a little skittish, but it's because we're showcasing them, and they're a little stage fright, a little stage shy, right? Yep, a little shy, and I think 
chihuahuas, for the most part, it doesn't take a lot of nervousness to bring on that shake. So. Yeah, they like to shake. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah they uh, sure do. So that's a li that's a lily. That's lily. And up next is Raylan. This is Raylan. Very, very friendly little girl. Um, Raylan needs to be in a yard that has really good fencing. Um, she tends to be able to work her way under fencing or over fencing. So she needs a place where she's going to be in with the family and not left outside because you leave her out in the backyard, she will be out. Huh, good girl. She is about two years old also. Uh, you can see a little overweight for her size, but um, if she gets a place where she can get out and run and play and maybe go for walks with the family, she can bring that down just a little bit. I see. And that Take is no Raylan. offense to that, Raylan. You just go right ahead and <laughs> get plump. That's fine. Uh, Felix is what we call a dog de Bordeaux. Let me try that again. A dog de Bordeaux. Dog de Bordeaux. You know, That's most right. people will look at this guy and think he's a pit bull, but that is not what he is. He's very young. He is four months old, so he's just getting there. Um, these guys get pretty big in size. So he's going to need some space, um, but they're, they're loungers. They like to hang out with the family on the couch or on the floor and just be part of the crowd. He is a little boy. I don't know if I said that or not, but he is a little boy and very, very happy as you can see. Good boy. All right, that's Felix. And our last dog of the day is Teapot. We've showcased Teapot before, so it's time to come get Teapot and make Teapot part of your forever home, okay? She's only five months old, and I think she's been here probably about a month. So she's just a sweetheart of a little girl and would really make an awesome pet for anyone, but she needs to get out of this shelter and have a place to call home. She, she's gonna get bigger as well. Yeah, she will be a pretty good sized dog also, but um, you know, showing the difference between her and Felix, the last dog we had, you know, there's not near the wrinkles in the face. That kind of gives you the idea of the difference, but she will not be near as big as Felix will be. She'll probably, her ideal weight at adult should be 40 to 50 pounds. All right. So Julie, Teapot marks the end of our dog showcase and we're about to move on to our cat showcase. Uh, but before we do, let me ask you about something really serious. We usually always have some type of a topic that we talk about mm -hmm. and, and typically it has something to do with the holidays or the season of the year and weather conditions. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly the case today in today's show. We're in the middle of monsoon season and monsoon season for some people, especially people that aren't locals, is uh, quite traumatic. Yes, uh, but it's very traumatic for our pets, whether absolutely. they are inside or outside. Mm -hmm. We're talking about wind, rain, dust, lightning, thunder flooding, uh, even in your own yards flooding. Um, what can you tell us about, or what can you tell our citizens about uh, being proactive and preventing uh, you know, any type of issues with your pets during monsoon season? Well, there are a lot of things to consider. Um, for one thing is most people are aware whether or not their dog is afraid of storms, whether it's an outside dog or an inside dog. Um, if it's an outside dog and you know it's gonna storm or the storms are starting to roll in, uh, consider going home, getting them inside where they're safe and they can't bust through the fencing or um, hurt themselves trying to get out of fencing. If they're inside dogs and you know that they get very scared, they can do things like go through glass windows or break through doors. Uh, they will do pretty traumatic injuries to themselves trying to find what they feel is safe. So it's a good idea if you have a dog that's a very afraid of storms, try to have somebody with them when the storms are happening. It helps keep them calm. Uh, they do sell things to help to calm a dog, like a, a compression type shirt. Uh, it's called a, a thunder shirt. It just puts pressure on the body and it helps to calm. Um, if you've tried that and it doesn't work, you may want to seek the advice of your uh, local veterinarian. They may have something that can help you. Um, it becomes a very serious problem. Um, our, our storms we had over the weekend, we brought in several animals right at the beginning of the week that have gotten out of gates that the wind blows open. Bringing up another topic, make sure your gates are latched properly. 
maybe have locks on them so that the wind or something flying through the air can't hit it and pop it open. Um, having your dog in the backyard, make sure they have a safe place even if they're not afraid of the storm where they can get into where flying debris is not going to hit them, cut them, hurt them, um, anything like that. Um, another thing to be aware of is the way that valley fever is transmitted can be through the dust and the dust storms. Animals do get valley fever. Um, as far as I understand, it's not something that can be totally cured, but there is medicine to help with it, but it's better to prevent them from being out in that dust so that they don't contract valley fever. Um, the heat, uh, even if it's not sunny outside, it's darn hot out there and, and the dogs overheat very easily. Um, bringing them with you in the cars, if you don't absolutely have to bring them with in the sense of they got to go to the vet today, better off to leave them home where it's cool, there's air conditioning and even if they're not inside, they're outside, can be in the shade, be have a sw little swimming pool outside where they can get in and cool down. Um, it doesn't take a lot, dog long to go into uh, heat related illness um, and you can lose your dog that way or you can cause brain damage that way with your animals. So can't stress enough that we keep them cool, keep them out of the sun. Um, I believe Arizona does have a law now that you cannot bring your dogs out on the hiking trails in the summertime. Uh, burns their feet. Uh, that rule, you know, the five second rule that everybody uses, can use that with the dog's feet too. If you put your hand down on the pavement and you can't hold it there longer than five seconds, your dog shouldn't be walking on it. It's so easy for them to get hurt and get burned and so many things to have happen to them. That's right. That's right. Great information, great advice. And you know our rule here in Casa Grande, folks, if it's too hot for your tots and it's too hot for your pets, then don't take them out there with you, okay? Whether that's in your vehicle or just outside altogether. Absolutely. I mean, of course, if you have an outside pet that needs to go outside for, you know, the reasons that pets need to go outside mm -hmm. for, then you do that hopefully in a shaded area Absolutely. and then get them back inside. Um, one more thing I wanted to ask you about, though. Um, what if a, a pet owner comes home during or after a storm and they find that their pet is missing, like maybe they have a pet in a yard and they find their, their pet is missing, what should they do? The very first thing they should do is pick up the phone and call 520-426-9300. Leave a message for us telling us what you're missing. Describe the dog, give us your address, phone number. Let us know that your dog is missing. Do that immediately so that we know that you're missing the dog. Um, some of the other things you need to do, of course, is go out and look for them, um, but you need to get on social media, post a picture of your dog, tell everyone he's missing, put posters up. Um, the more information on the more places you can put it, the better off you are and the faster you will find your pet. Right, and to be preventative, of course, we can make sure that our gates are secured properly. Absolutely. And that if you have a side gate to your yard, that underneath it uh, and the, the sides of it uh, are well secured. You know, dogs like to dig underneath a gate, especially yes. if they're scared, yep. or that they're tall enough not to jump over a fence or a wall or a gate, right? Absolutely. Okay, okay it's time to showcase our cats. Let's start off with Moon Pie. Moon Pie. Moonpai is a domestic long-haired, male neutered. He's about five years old. He's a very friendly, loving cat. Um, does require a lot of grooming, lots of brushing. As you can see, he loves to have his ears scratched. Um, it, he's more gray than he is black. We have him listed as black, but I, I would call this a gray myself. And this is Moon Pie. And that's something people might not be aware of, is that long-haired cats need to be groomed. Yes. And I know some people believe that cats just groom themselves, but... Well, they try, but with hair this long, you probably need to brush them daily. Right. Yes. All right, that's Moon Pie. Fifi came all the way from France, right? Fifi is a Siamese mix, a lilac point. She's about a year old. Also, um, you can see even with short-haired cats, they need the brushing. Um, they'll, they tend to keep themselves clean, but um, you wouldn't want them cleaning all this loose hair off. So brushing is very important in any length cat, length hair cat. That is Fifi. Fifi's about a year old. Right? Yes, she's about a year old. All right, and next up is Susie. Susie is a short hair. 
She's female and she's spayed already also. And she is declawed on all four feet. So if... Oh, oh you're okay, honey. If, if you're looking for a cat that can't destroy the furniture, maybe Susie is the one who can be the cat for you. And she is about three years old. She's not particularly caring for being out here in a room she's never been in. But I think once she gets comfortable, life is good. And Some big is, cats today. Yes. Yes, we do have a lot of big cats. And this is Caveman. <laughs> you can see he's a domestic long hair. He's orange and white. He's about three years old. Uh, I think he's about two. I think I made you a little bit older than you are. I have to tell you folks, these cats are capable, and the dogs as well, they're capable of holding up their own heads and bodies. It's just that when Julie gets a hold of them, <laughs> they're so comfortable that they just kind of lounge around in her arms. But we don't want that. We don't want them to stay here that long, so come get some of these no, cats We want dogs. them to lounge at your house. That's right, that's right. Now, Julia, as we, as we wait for our next cat, which is Ruby, to come up, mm -hmm. and you get all the cat hair off of you, right? <laughs> Maybe you can uh, tell us real quick. You mentioned something about, I believe it was uh, Susie, was declawed. Yes. Um, now, that's not a service provided by the Animal Care and Adoption Center. Absolutely. And not, not just no. that, but you do have some, I wouldn't call it advice, just some <clears throat> comments to give pet owners about clawing or declawing. Don't you? Absolutely. If you ever are planning to let your cat get outside, you should never declaw them. Um, that's their natural defense. Um, without those claws, they can't fend off dogs, uh, coyotes, anything that wants to threaten them. That's their only defense system. Um, you shouldn't, technically, if you're going to let them outside, you shouldn't really even trim their toenails um, because Again, that's their defense system. If you're going to have a declawed cat, it should be an indoor cat only. Um, I understand that sometimes they get out, but um, you need to take all precautions that you can to make sure those cats don't end up outside because they're kind of defenseless out there. That's right. Very yeah. good. Thank you very much. That was good advice. And Ruby is stylish in her purple fuzzy <laughs> collar. And this is what we call a dilute torty. She is about two years old, and we, I would consider this a medium hair, or people would call her a short hair. But it's much closer to medium than it is short. Uh, again, it's going to need a lot of brushing. Um, and people like to say with torties that they have a tortitude, meaning they can have a bit of an attitude and it's just part of their breed, but. Once they get attached to a family, they're attached for life. They, they love people once, once they know that they belong with you. Julie, I actually believe all cats have an attitude. Yes. Uh, a good attitude or sometimes a bad attitude, but I believe they all have an attitude. Well, the fortunate thing is with cats, they can do that. That's it's right. It's a little bit harder for people to be that way, but um, I've heard a lot of jokes about people saying that um, cats have servants and, and dogs have masters. That's right. I've heard that joke too. <laughs> All right, that's Ruby. This is Sammy. Sammy's a little scared, so we're going to try and put him up here. He's never been out of that room back there. So, oh, can we let go, Sammy? Thank you, buddy. And he is a short hair. Uh, he's a male neutered. He's not sure he wants to be here, but he's doing okay. He's about five years old. So you can imagine if, if an animal's lived in one home for five years and then they end up being here where they have to be rehomed, it can be a little traumatic for them. But our hope is, is that somebody opens their home and their heart to him and, and gives him another place to be where he can feel at home and feel comfortable. That's Sammy. So our grand finale of our cat showcase today are a few kittens. Now, by a few, I'm not sure what that means. We're about to find out, right? So we are about to find kittens. out. And this is just a fraction of what we have here. All right, just a fraction of what we have here at the Animal Care and Adoption yes. Center? Yes. And how many do we have in there? We have three. I see three right now. There's, we, have, we have three in here right now. 
Um, but we do have several of these cages with kittens in them. Well, there um, they are. Our kitten season has been pretty strong this year. Um, we probably have about 20, 30 kittens here that are younger than 12 weeks of age. Um, we've had them from two days up to 12 weeks and, and we have a lot of them. And they all are getting real close and ready. They only have to be 12 weeks and two pounds to be able to go home. So many of them are very close to that and very ready to be out of the pens and playing and in a home. I think it's the new room because when they're in their larger pens, we have these where we have ramps or they're connected together to make several cages and they'll run through and jump and play, but maybe it's being rolled into a new room and they're a little cautious, but... That's okay though, because <laughs> I think it's great that our viewers get to see some of the toys that you put in place there and we have some viewers out there that have never had cats before and if they would like to come and, and make a cat or a kitten one of their own. There's some great ideas as far as toys. And and all of these, these cages we have are, are donated to us by a concerned citizen who loves cats. He brings us a new cage every month. Oh, great. Um, and so we, we have several of these, and they work wonderful because uh, kittens don't like to be by themselves. They like to be together. So we can put two or three into a cage, and they can play and have company and... and, and uh, get the socialization they need before going into a home. All right. All well, right. these are our kittens, or just a very small handful of them. Very small handful. Like I said, I believe we have 20 to 30 kittens under the age of 12 weeks old. All right. Well, that ends our showcase of dogs and cats mm -hmm. for the day. Uh, we're very glad that you could uh, get a look at these dogs and cats, but we really would like for you to call or come down uh, to the Animal Care and Adoption Center here in Casa Grande and, and see if you'd like to meet one to take home for your forever pet, right? Absolutely. And we'll talk about how you can do that in just a minute. Uh, but we recently, or uh, the, the center here recently had a low-cost licensing and vaccination clinic that was very successful, right? It was, yeah. And uh, we learned during that clinic that um, there are some people out there that don't know that their animals need to be licensed or vaccinated. Yes. Could you talk about that just a little bit? We did hear that quite often. We had many people come and want to get just the rabies vaccine and not a license or, or vice versa. Um, we do have uh, city ordinances that outline uh, what we're required to have for our pets. Um, all city pets are required to have rabies vaccine and licenses. Um, they vary in price depending on whether your animal is spayed or neutered. Um, the vaccine at our clinic is $12. There's no other cost to that rabies vaccine and then you must purchase your license on top of it. But it, it is a, the city ordinance and law that they must be licensed then vaccinated at all times. And they should be wearing the license. When they're wearing the license and we pick the dog up on the street, we can run that license and we can bring them home. We don't have to bring them in, impound them into the shelter. Um, our shelter is a beautiful shelter, is cared for very, very well. But anytime you bring an animal into an environment where there's many pets in one building, you risk things like kennel cough or, or a few ticks or something like that. So a dog out there wearing a license it's almost like a ticket home to have that on them. So uh, we would much prefer to get them in back in their homes than to bring them here and put them into the shelter environment. Very good, very good information. So uh, there is a way for people to, c to come down here to contact you. Can you tell us how people can do that? Absolutely. Give us a call at 520-426-9300. I apologize, but you do have to leave a message. So please wait through the message. Leave us a message. We will get to you as quickly as we can. Um, unfortunately, we don't have someone who want, works the front desk. So if we're out on calls, uh, we'll get to the calls as soon as we get back. And we will get to you um, and help you in any way we can. Uh, but please leave a message. We're fortunate enough uh, a couple of days a week to have volunteers in our front office. Um, and they are here to show animals to answer phone calls, those days usually work a little smoother because they can get back to people faster than we can. Um, if we're out on a call with a dog who's overheating, we can be there for a good hour. So it kind of 
backs things up a little bit, but please do not hesitate to leave a message and we will get back to you as soon as we can. Absolutely, and you know, I can vouch for that. Um, if you think the police department and the fire department take a lot of calls for service throughout our community, I can tell you that our animal control officers here take more. <laughs> and they're very busy every day, uh, evenings, nights, weekends, and uh, they do a great job. You do an absolutely great job, but it's a busy, busy work. Absolutely. And so please, if you call that number, don't be discouraged by a voicemail. Leave a message so that they can get back to you. If you don't leave a message, they can't get back to you. Nope. That's mm -hmm. all there is to it, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay, um, so there are a few ways that people can keep up with uh, the pets that are up for adoption uh, and with information that's going out uh, from the city as uh, in, in regards to adoption, licensing, vaccines, mm -hmm. things of that nature. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is uh, obviously uh, our city website, which is www.casagrandeaz.com. GOV and of course uh, azpetplates.org mm -hmm. and we have our Facebook and Twitter pages that you can like and follow and we hope that you do and there's always information coming out from those right? Absolutely. Great. Well, we thank you very much for watching us again today and we hope you tune in next time and uh, in the meantime come on down and find yourself a forever pet. Have a great day.